Oh! 
just a moment to to welcome everyone as we as we come to to this sacred space we come in sadness and grief and in shock at the loss of Samantha, her untimely death. We don't, we don't, we don't come to, can you hear me? Okay. Um, if we, we, we gather for the, for the liturgy and we hold the sadness, we're acknowledging it. We're not trying to diminish it or get over it. It's, it's deep sadness that's wounded your hearts. It's broken you. So we sit with it together and we acknowledge it together. And while we have questions, we know that no answer will satisfy the deep loss, and especially for the family. And we express, I express my condolences to Mary, and Lawrence, to Mark, Danielle, Ryan, Adam, Shay, Holly, Liliana, Eva Grace, whose baptism will occur at this funeral liturgy. It's a type of opposites to Mary and Alan, to Joshua, Samantha Spuss, whose wedding ceremony took place here just two and a half years ago. And it's difficult to understand why we're here for this today. And that's why we, we bring that, that sadness, that depth of loss and brokenness here. And we're present to each other in our grief. And the liturgy today is about grieving. There's sprinkles of hope in there, but it's about grieving. And it's almost the irony of what we're doing today is we're acknowledging death and new life at the same time. And we're doing the liturgies that acknowledge them at the same time. We're doing a funeral liturgy, acknowledging the end of life and baptism, acknowledging the beginning of life. From the womb of Samantha, it's rare to do it this way, but it speaks about death and life, all interwoven just interwoven, um, sadness and joy all at the same time. But it's never brought together as close as this. Um, and the joy of the baptism and new life doesn't diminish or minimize the death. Because it's the sadness that brings us here. 
and we do it within the context of faith, and we all have our different look and view on what faith means, and especially at a time of tragedy, when it doesn't make sense, and we have no answers, and we question everything, and we wonder why things happen the way they happen. So I don't have answers to any of that, but we come in prayer to know somehow or other God's present. And our ancestors are present. Those who have already gone before us are present and very present to Samantha, who is now with them. So we bring it, the confusion, the doubt, the questions, even the disbelief about God's very existence. We bring it all. We don't leave any of it out. We bring it all. It's all part of the tapestry. Almighty God, creator of all, it is our certain faith that your son who died on the cross was raised from the dead the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this holy mystery, your servant, Samantha, who has gone to her rest in Christ, may joy, may share in the joy of Christ's resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and with the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. And we listen to the Word of God, and I invite those who will do the readings to come forward. A reading from the book of Job. Job answered and said, Oh, would that my words were written down, would that they were inscribed in a record, that with an iron chisel and with lead, they were cut in the rock forever. But as for me, I know that my vindicator lives and that he will at last stand forth upon the dust, whom I myself shall see, my own eyes, not in others shall behold him, and from my flesh I shall see God. My inmost being is consumed with longing. This is the word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. All people will be brought to life in Christ. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead also came through a human being. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ, the first fruits. Then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand to read the gospel. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In God's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How? can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to God except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated. (laughs) 
our readings, each of them today, they're kind of there to help us cope. The gospel reading just proclaimed is to remind us of God's sacred presence and that everything happens in God, but not necessarily designed by God. Um, that God didn't design this to happen, um, but God is present in our presence. Um, that God is present in all things, and we, we know that, but we're inclined more to think of God's presence during more joyful times and less inclined during sadness, and especially when death is untimely. And this, the death of Samantha, is untimely. It's out of order. It's very much out of order. Mm -hmm. And especially when Samantha birthed forth new life just days ago. It doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense um, that, that here comes new life into the world, planned and chosen, and the excitement of looking forward to it. And it came out of a suffering body, a body that was actually on life support. And the, the new life birthed out of that um, and the birthing mother the parent passed it doesn't it doesn't make sense um, but the presence of God and I, and I don't know how to describe that um, but somehow it's in our presence um, as a grieving community of family and friends and the tears and the weaknesses and the brokenness and everything else that's part of this is present, um, that God is present in all that because God is present in us. Um, it's not about theology. <laughs> Theology, theology is not about something out there. Theology, the Word of God, is a living, breathing organism. It's not in books. It's not here. It's in us. It's in us. Theology, the Word of God, breathes with us. When we're breathing joyness, joyfulness, that's theology, that's God. When we're struggling to breathe, and literally, at times, more so today, quite literally for these reasons, God is present. That's theology, that's God is present in all of it. The ups and downs, the turmoil, the things that make sense and the things that don't make sense because God is in us. So. God is not somewhere else. The, 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 the best description of God is in the here and now, in this. Um, and, it, and what happened two and a half years ago, in the joyfulness of a marriage, God was fully present. And in the sadness of two and a half years later, God is here, fully present. Not elsewhere. It's not the elsewhere God, um, like existing in some other domain or realm that we might get to if we're good enough. 
that God is present in the here and now, mystically, in the breath that we take and the struggle sometimes to take that breath, and that heaven, and we believe because of our faith tradition, because we're here, that heaven exists and that we all hope to be in that heavenly domain someday the further down the road the better um, but regardless that that's our goal and we believe in faith that samantha is there now but heaven it's it's not it's not another place it's not another world um, heaven best described is this world clearly seen that is heaven and today as untimely as samantha's death happened she is seeing everything clearly every single thing clearly and that is nothing less than perfect perfect contentment and joy even in our grief and sadness that she is resting peacefully in god's loving and caring arms and at the moment of her death she collapsed into the the deathless arms of god only to realize that all the while she was already there we all are we all are and again god did not design this to happen god doesn't design things to dish out you no know, perfect designs of life for some people and tragedies for others that's not a god that i would be embracing an unfair unjust god giving many blessings to somebody over here and many misfortunes to somebody over here things happen um, sometimes we might even create them but god is present in all of us and we tap in to that sacred presence regardless of how things happen we we tap into the sacredness that is within each of us so that we hold each other in grief we're present to each other in sadness that we provide shoulders to cry on and arms to hold and to lift up that's god working through us that's acknowledging our holiness and our sacredness that's acknowledging that we through god are able to be life-giving to others when they need it the most that we provide that conduit of life that we become those who are able even in our weakness too and our sadness that we lift up someone else in their weakness and sadness and they in turn are lifting up us that's how life works and that's the community component of life that's so necessary um, and very much needed in today's world of brokenness and division that we need to acknowledge the community component and you're already doing that by your presence and <clears throat> It doesn't bring Samantha back, but it acknowledges her goodness and her holiness and sacredness. I only knew Samantha for a short while, and maybe even out of all of you for the shortest, because I don't live here. Um, but you, especially her mother, her father, her husband, and other family members, and dear, dear friends, all of you have a connection to Samantha. You know her goodness 
you know her goodness. You knew, or know, it's not past tense, it's present. You know her heart. You know how she lived. Joshua, you, you fell in love with her because of who she is. <laughs> That's not in the coffin. Who she, Samantha is did not die. Her physical presence died way too soon, way too soon. Wasn't old enough to die. But her heart and her soul and her spirit didn't. In fact, if anything, that expanded. <laughs> now it's not contained. It's not contained by physical presence of a body, a temple. It's not contained to just when you're present to her and standing in front of her. Now it knows no bounds. It's limitless. And wherever you go, Samantha goes. Wherever you be, Samantha is there. That spirit now is fully, fully present and fully present in the most loving way. It knows no more limits and is not even prone to moments of badness. Now it's perfect. And why we, would, we still don't want it, we would still wish to have postponed that. And that's okay, we should hold that too. We didn't, God, we didn't ask for this, all of that mystical understanding of God's presence to visit us so early. So we, we say that to God, but it's still here. So, and you already know in these past few days, Samantha has already visited you. She has already visited you. Um, and it's with extreme sadness that her visits have taken place. Those will continue. And when you look at the things that remind you of Samantha, you're not looking at the past. You're acknowledging the presence. Memory is not about past events being recalled. Memory is about things that are happening in the present time. So when we, a, a chair that Samantha used to sit on would remind you of Samantha as you gaze upon it these days, is Samantha saying, I'm still here. So it's, re it's bringing the past forward to the present. And we all have those, oh, that occasion, oh, that word, oh, that thing, oh, that whatever reminds me of someone. And it's that someone saying, I'm still here. I'm still here. And, and Joshua, Joshua is, is my um, nephew. And he's our, the first of the nieces and nephews. So we go back 36 years. I can hardly believe that. It's impacting you the most, Joshua, I know. I don't know, I can't identify at all. Um, the sadness, the, your whole life as husband and wife, all your plans, you see, they seem shattered, um, and they are. But your strength, your resilience, your love for Samantha, what you wrote in the obituary that has already traveled the globe several times, um, describes the depth of your love and your commitment to Samantha. And I can recall two and a half years ago when the words that you both spoke um, until death do us part were not planned to be this soon um, and yet they have visited you in real time way too soon and that your words then spoke to today 
and that your words that you wrote just a few days ago spoke to your commitment that continues. <laughs> and that's who you are that describes your character and your deep, deep love for Samantha so that the words on your wedding day were words, but they were enfleshed and especially so since Samantha's death, that they're now truly enfleshed in who you are and your children, Samantha's children, and that they continue to be lived out, your, your marriage vows in how you are living and the depth of love that you have had and have for Samantha that that continues and, and from a, a, in a whole different way, in a sad way, in a broken way, but it's also what creates the depth of it. Um, so uh, uh, as a community of family and friends, are, we, we surround the family with our love and presence and prayer and Joshua and the children. Um, and we not just provide for them on these days, but in the years to come. So, their sacredness and holiness. So, acknowledging Samantha's death on this day is also, and it's like a juxtaposition, acknowledging new life by baptizing the newborn, the infant. And so we, and I have never done this before. I've never done a baptism at a funeral, but it speaks to us about the two bookends of life. Um, but a funeral's for the, the end and a baptism's for the beginning. And we're doing both on the same day somehow or other contextualizing every single thing in between and maybe even waking us up to know um, how fragile life is how at the moment of a child's beginning just a few weeks old and what should be you no know, 60 more years down the road but cut short so it's it's all that it's not clean <laughs> It's not all, doesn't all make sense. I can't make sense of it. But we're ritualizing it all the same. We have to ritualize it. Um, and maybe in the not being able to make sense of it and ritualizing it might help us maybe give some meaning to it and make some sense of it. So I would like to invite Joshua. Samantha's spirit is present in this. It's why we're doing it, because Samantha's physical temple is here, and her spirit is full and complete. So Joshua, the father, and the godparents with the child to come to the baptismal font for the baptism. Thank 
we know that the spirit of Samantha, the breath of Samantha, the womb that carried her child will always be present to the child, to Abby, Grace, that what united them within the womb um, can never be disunited, can never be broken. Our parents, our mother, give life, gave life to all of us. And it can never be disconnected. So she begins her, her journey of life with the spirit of her mother always with her. Um, not disconnected to that, but always present to it. So she was, we acknowledge her journey. And the story um, of her mother will be always present to her passed on from her Joshua, the family, and we bless them. We bless maybe Grace as she begins her journey, and we promise that we will be present to her throughout the course of our life. I invite you to rise for the prayers of intercession. In baptism, Samantha received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead her over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Samantha was nourished at the table of the Savior at Mass. Welcome her now into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, hear us. Many friends, and members of our own families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, hear us. Many people die by violence, war, famine, and many other things, often unjustly things. Grant all of them a place of love and peace in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, hear us. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone and whose faith may be expressed in different ways, that we are all united in the same God who created all. Lord, hear us for the family and friends, for all of you who mourn the loss of Samantha, who seek comfort and consolation. Lord, we ask that you heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that oftentimes comes from grief. Lord, hear us. And we pray that the choices that we make in life will always reflect the goodness of life, that they will always reflect our call to live in community in acknowledging that we are all one and that we are united in God's love as one. 
and that our, our, our decisions will always reflect that common bond that exists between us, in us, and through us. Lord, hear us. And we are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Samantha. Strengthen our own hope this day so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, hear us. And we take a moment for our own private, personal prayers. Lord, hear us. Creator God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. You may be seated as we continue with Mass. Be near, O Lord, we pray, to your servant, Samantha, on whose funeral day we offer you the sacrifice of reconciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to her or any human fault have affected her, it may, by your loving gift, be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, holy, Almighty, Eternal One, through Christ our Lord. In Him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful people, Lord, life is changed, but not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, 
an eternal dwelling is made ready for us in heaven with angels and archangels and with all the thrones and dominions with all the hosts and the powers of heaven we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest you are indeed holy o lord you alone are the font of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts of bread and wine we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like this morning's dewfall so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our lord and savior jesus christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread giving thanks he broke the bread gave it to his disciples and said take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant that will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of this death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held all of us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may all be gathered into one by the holiness of God's Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the whole world. Bring her to the fullness of love and charity, peace and justice, together with our Pope, our bishops, clergy, religious, and all people of every faith tradition throughout our whole world. Remember your servant, Samantha, who has left this world. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also share in his resurrection. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your love and mercy welcome all of them into the divine light of your holy face have mercy on all of us gathered here on this day O lord we pray that with the blessed virgin mary mother of our god and our own mother with the blessed apostles and with all the saints, our ancestors, and all people who have pleased you down through the ages of time, that we may all merit to be co-heirs 
to eternal life and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We rise. With confidence in God, let us pray to God using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessedness of hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins or on our weaknesses, but rather look on the faith of all your church and graciously grant each of us the peace and the unity that is in accordance with your divine will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of God be with you all. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We, we invite those of you who wish to receive communion to, um, to come forward first. Um, this side, if you can come up the center island, <clears throat> is that the way it's normally? We'll come up the center island, go back the side, and then I'll go over here so that it's row by row, um, and then I will go to the side. So I will do this side first, one row at a time that you would come forward, then this side. There were people
Before we go our way from this liturgy, let us take leave of our sister Samantha. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and may it strengthen our hope. For one day we will 
joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ Jesus, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to Abraham's side. Receive her soul and present her to God, to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let your light shine upon her forever. Receive her soul and present her to God, to God the Most High. Into your hands, God of mercies, we commend our sister Samantha with the sure and certain faith and hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him. We give you thanks for all the many blessings which you bestowed upon Samantha in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful God, turn toward all of us this day and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help all of us, her family and friends who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith and hope until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with Samantha forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Samantha, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham and where Lazarus is poor no longer. May you find eternal rest. Whoever believes in me, even though that person shall die, shall live too. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me shall never die. Let us rise. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord's blessings come upon us and remain with us for always, filling us with God's love and God's peace in the Father, in the Son, and in the Holy Spirit. Let us take Samantha to her final place of rest. Set out on a narrow way many years ago, hoping I would find true love along the broken road. But I got lost a time or two, wiped my brow and kept pushing. I couldn't see her.
Let God bless the bride.